Welcome to Artistic Adventures. Well, I probably should have called this the adventure dress video, but we're just going to call it the dress video. But everything that could go wrong went wrong in this video. And that's why I'm uploading it on Tuesday night instead of Sunday night. Here we go. All right, so we have our, our Liv doll, and we have her wig on her, and we've kind of fixed it a little bit, but we're going to work on it more later. And this is the beginning of the dress. This will be the front, and it's going to be gathered up at the top. This is my vision. That's what I hope it's going to work out. This is just some white satin. I think that's the same material I used on Cleopatra. Before I get into this, though, I did want to show you a project that I worked on during the week. This is a this is a petite Blythe, and uh, I customized her. I carved her lips and her nose, and I actually pulled off the sleepy eyes and put in some real glass eyes and changed the eyelashes. So this is uh, normally how she would have looked. Uh, you can see how the sleepy eyes, they just don't stay open, and that's why I really ended up deciding to go with the open eyes. I know we talked about this, you know, whether to do sleepy or not, and I really like the way she looks with her eyes open. And I was also able to do the eyelashes better. So that's how she turned out. And I'm pretty happy with her. All right, back to the dress. So uh, what I'm going to do is gather the top of this and put something through it. I'm not sure what yet. Um, just uh, kind of make these things up as I go. But the vision I have is that it will be gathered up at the top with something run through it to go around her neck. And that the back will come to the waist, not all the way up to the neck. So the first thing I'm going to do is hem the side down about, well, probably just past where I think the back will come so that that edge is finished. And that will be coming down just under her arms. Um, doing this before I do the top part because once I do that, it would be too late. So. I've got the sides done, and now I'm just going to fold down one time a small seam and sew it. And then I'm going to turn it down again a little bit wider because I'm going to run something through this. I'm not sure what yet, but something. Yeah, something will come to me eventually. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to uh, turn that down and sew the bottom of that, and that leaves a sort of a little casing opening there for me to put something through. So I'm just going to sew right across the bottom of that that uh, part that I folded down. I cannot tell you how many times my, my camera cut off during this video. I, I just don't know what's going on. It's really driving me crazy. It keeps cutting off. Uh, at one point it just completely stopped. And uh, that was Sunday night. I, I was prepared to keep filming and I had to stop because it just... It didn't keep going. All right, so we've got that front part done now with the side, and I, I can see that I, I have not gone down as far on one side as I did the other. So I'm taking the time to go ahead and sew just a little bit farther down on this side so it'll match the other one. I'm not sure exactly where the back's going to come. I, I'll know more once I fit it on the doll. But I just want to make sure they're even at this point and... That way, hopefully, it's going to work out. <gasps> this is such an adventure. Never done anything like this. This is crazy. Okay, so that's the front part. And I started to say I was going to run this piece of white yarn through, but then I was like, no. And I just really don't know. So I'm going to take a piece of this yellow cord. It's just a nylon cord. And I'm going to run it through temporarily. Um, doing it just because I don't really use this cord for much and uh, I don't really care if I waste it. So it's just going to be a placeholder until I can fit the dress the way I want and then I'll come up with something else to hold it on, on her. So this is the way I'm, I'm going to have it styled is sort of to be a little bit gathered up here and then it's going to be tied behind her neck. So that part is done. Now we're going to do a double hem, fold, double fold down. And this is going to be where the back comes at her waist. So that'll be a finished seam. 
And if you notice that this piece is so long, it's because I want the back to have a train. I want it to sweep out behind her in perfect queen fairy style. All right, so kind of measured where I think the waist will be. And now I'm going to sew the side seams, sew in the front to the back, starting you know, there at the point where the back will meet at the front's waist, basically. I guess that explains it. So I'm just putting a seam down here, and you can see uh, the front part ends and the back part continues, and that's exactly the way I want it. You can always trim this up some if it doesn't meet exactly, because, you know, I don't use patterns, so nothing's ever perfect. All right, so I'm doing the same thing on the other side. And I wanted to make sure that I left enough room for it at the waist for this to come up over the doll's hips and I wouldn't have to have some sort of snap or closing, closure. All right, so I've got the front done. We've, we've got it on the doll. And... I'm just, as I do this, I'm just sort of looking at it and thinking of ideas. That's just how I work. So I want it to pull down just a little bit more. Um, and you can see where the back comes at the waist. That's, that's how I wanted it to look. And then you've got the train that's going to trail out behind her. And the way I cut this uh, was a little bit, I was trying to match it up so that it was straight down to where the the train would start, and because I had cut it a little bit too long, I had to trim it so that it, it comes up to meet the seam of the front. And now I'm going to do the thing I hate the most, which is put a hem in something that's round. I hate doing this. This one actually started out working pretty good. I actually went all the way around, and then... It's like when I got to the very last three inches, that's when it started not wanting to fold over correctly. And I just kept working and working and working. I don't know. Why, why do I keep designing things with a round hem? I, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to end up uh, ironing that out so that it, it will lay better. But that's, that's our hem at this point. We've got the front that's short and the back with the trailing train. I did actually iron that off camera later so that it would lay down better, which I advise people to do, especially with this sort of fabric. All right, so we're going to put it back on the doll now that we have it hemmed. And the next part of this, I want to have the dress on her because it's going to be attached to the dress. I'm going to do sort of an over robe or over wrap. I'm not sure what you call it. Um, I just sort of see this uh, in my head, like how the design or how the dress is going to look. And then I try to figure out how to put the pieces together to make it look like that. So far, it's the way I, I'm pictured it in my head. But uh, this next part is going to be a little bit more difficult because it's not going to be fitted. So I found this scarf at a thrift shop for a dollar. And I like it because it has this really pretty lace that has like these dangling sort of flower design of the lace, which I think goes with fairies, like flowers. So what I did is I'm bringing up pieces of it to the very center of her top. And then I'm going to have it also trail out behind her. So I'm going to have to cut the part that comes down at the front off of the scarf so that it's even with the hem of the dress in the front. And then it will flare out behind her. So I'm taking this section and I'm pinning it up at the top. This did have a little bit of a triangle to it, so I'm, I'm also trying to make sure that the point of the scarf is in the center of the back as it flows out behind her. So I'm looking at that as I'm pinning this to her, and I'm also making it very loose. Okay, so here's where I'm going to cut 
the front part so that it's even with the front hem of the dress. And then the rest of the scarf will just flare out behind her. And then I'm going to eyeball that other side and cut it the same length. So then we have the two trains. We've got the white train of the dress and also the pink train of this over overdress or overskirt or over robe or whatever we're going to call it. Um, or just, it's just more dress decoration. So now I'm going to double fold this uh, part that I cut and hem it so that it has a finished edge. I'm doing that on both sides. And since the train part has the lace on it, we don't have to do anything to that, thank goodness. I think I, from now on, I'm going to think I'm going to do everything in squares or points instead of circles. I really don't like that, him and that. Oh, well. Too late now. This doll's going to have it. All right, so you can see I have those two pieces pinned up there. And then I want it to really drape down in the back. I don't want it to fit close to the body. I also want to make sure that this is right in the middle of the top. I, I don't know why I had such trouble with that. I, I think it was this whole video. I just had problems with everything. Everything that could go wrong pretty much did. So now I'm just going to tack that down up at the top so I can get rid of that pin. So I'm just tacking those two pieces to the top of the dress. I want them to eventually sort of, you know, allow that pink part to open so that the dress is visible underneath. But I want the two pieces at the top to come together. So as we go along with this project, I'm not going to say that I completely finished what I want to do to the dress in this video. I, I think I did the basics, but you'll see at the end. All right, I found some jewelry that I'm going to use. Um, this piece right here has a like a ruby crystal in it. So uh, that really doesn't go with this. So I'm going to pop that out. This is all costume jewelry that I find at thrift stores or, you know, different places. And I, I buy pieces very inexpensively. And then I have them on hand and I find something I like that, that I think will work and I use it. So for this piece, it's actually an earring. You can see it has a back on it. So I'm going to pull that back off also. And I lost that part of the video, so you didn't get to see that. Sorry. But I did take a peach, sort of a peach colored crystal and uh, glued it into the center of that. And I set that aside to dry. And that's going to go on the dress really at the last. So this necklace, um, which I really like, it has colors that are like a light peach and a a darker peach. So I'm going to make use of this um, as her belt. Now it has, this is a little beadwork to show you if you're not familiar with these sorts of things that are used in making jewelry and bead, beading. It has these little caps, clam caps, that the necklace part runs through. This The back of and there's a little hole. It goes through the center. And then the, there's a crimp bead that's put on the end and then the clam is shut, and, and the crimp bead keeps, keeps it from going back through the hole. And that's how that's attached. So you can see it's just like a little clam there, open, and I'm trying to push the necklace through it. This necklace is, uh, the chain part is not symmetrical. It's like flatter on one side than the other, so it's a little hard to uh, push through. So you can see there how it runs through the center of that, that clam shape. So what I'm going to do is clip off the end that has the crimp bead on it and pull that out. I'm going to pull all three of them out. And then this back part will be the back of her belt. And um, basically we're going to just remake it. But I set that aside at that point. Uh, we're going to come back to that later. For right now, I want to go ahead and finish this part. Uh, Eventually, I will put that uh, piece that we put the crystal in uh, on the center. But for right now, I'm taking some of the lace from the scarf that I cut off. And I'm going to sew it up at the top here. 
I like that it has sort of a curve at the top that matches the curve of where the, the point of the two pieces of pink fabric are. And then it's going to go around to the sides of the white dress. I'm not sewing the pink part to it. I'm just sewing it to the white part because I want the pink part to sort of drape down. I don't want it to be attached to this. So I'm going along the top and sewing the top of the lace to the white dress, keeping the pink out from underneath it. And then when I get to the side, I take the remainder of the lace and fold it under the side right here. I'm just going to fold it under to finish it and tack that underneath the side part. The lace is, it's really pretty, but the, you know, when you cut it, it has so many different designs to it that it, it's sort of ragged looking. So I'm just cut, tucking that under the side and then making sure I get the thread through all those little pieces of the lace and tack it down. So that's how it ends up looking on the side. And you can see I didn't catch the, the pink material. It's just on the white material. And this helps the pink material lay the way I want it to. And then I'm going to go back over and do the exact same thing to the other side. And that did that off camera. And so it's, this is, that part's finished. And we're going to go back to, we're going to go back to this uh, necklace that I took apart. So you can see there are all the, the li three little clams have, uh, I've removed the chain from all three of those on one side and kept it on the other side. And now what I'm doing is I want to remove the little dangling jewels because we're going to make this much smaller than it is as a necklace. So where the jewels are dangling will not be in the proper place for the belt. So the first part of the belt at the top is going to be fairly fitted around her waist. And then each additional piece will droop lower. There will be three pieces. So you see like the second piece is a little bit lower and the third piece is a little bit lower. But where the little jewels are doesn't make sense now. So we're going to have to remove those. And I chose this because these are removable. There are little crimp beads around where the jewels are. And the jewels are actually on a little hoop that's, that's threaded onto the necklace. So let me get uh, focused here so you can actually see this. All right, so you can see there's two little balls on either side. There's a ball right there, and there's another one on the other side of the hoop. Those are called crimp beads, and beaters or, or jewelry makers use those too for a var variety of reasons. Here, it's meant to keep that jewel in a specific place. So if I'm very careful, I can squeeze it so that I remove the crimp and make it round again, and then I can pull it off. See, it's just now it's just a little round piece of metal. So I actually off camera went and removed all those crimp beads. So now what we're left with is the pieces I cut to size with nothing on them. So I'm going to arrange it here so you can see how it's going to look once it's on her. Remember the catch part will be in the back. That first loop will be in the front around the waist pretty tight. And then we'll have two more loops hanging down and we're going to arrange these jewels back onto the chain of the necklace but they'll be spaced appropriately for the size of this belt as opposed to how they were on the original necklace. So I'm basically putting three jewels on each of the chains and I'm doing, using the same technique. I'm re-threading those crimp beads putting one on either side of the, the little dangling jewel. You'll see at the end that uh, some of them decided to come loose. Apparently the crimp beads weren't hollowing it, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to fix it. <laughs> I didn't fix it in this video though, because I was getting long and I was getting really frustrated with all the things going wrong. <laughs> all right. So that's how we ended up with the little jewels that I've, I've put back on the 
thing. Now the, the next part is we're going to have to re-thread the chain through the little clam catch. Okay, and then put a crimp bead on the very end of the chain and smush it with the pliers to flatten it. And that'll keep the chain from going back through the hole of the clam fastener. That one wasn't going on very well, so I ended up having to get a, another one that was a little bit more round. When you take them off like this, if you don't get them exactly round, it's harder to get them back on. So you just have to do it very carefully. Try to squeeze them just right so that they, they go round again. Alright, so I've, I've put that back on there. I'm pulling it back so that the crimp is in the the body of the clam. And then we squeeze the clam shut. Alright, and this worked really well on link number one and link number two. And then on link number three, I broke the clam. <laughs> you know, I, honestly, I, I mean, it, it it upset me at the time because I, ha I was having so many things go wrong. But honestly, to take this whole necklace apart and put it back together and that be the only thing that broke was probably pretty good. So, you know me, I'm going to fix it with, you know what, E6000. Yep. So I just filled the little reservoir of the clam with E6, a dab of E6000, put the crimp bead on the chain, laid it in the clam, in that one side of the clam, put some, some more E6000 on top of the chain, and then I put the top of the clam on top of that. So hopefully that's going to hold. And then I just like had to step away. There were several points of this video where I just, I had to walk away. I just had to go do something else. Camera kept shutting off. I kept losing pieces of the film. But I've got this back together now and I let it dry. And uh, I'm going to set that aside now. I want to make sure that's completely dry while I work on this part, which is another necklace that I found at a thrift shop. I like the chain on this. It's really kind of a pretty design, and uh, I even like that second piece. That's the smaller piece that is that the bigger piece is dangling from. And I may use that on her head, her crown. I'm not sure. I like it, and, it, and it's got pretty colors that I think go with the dress. Uh, the bottom part of that that dangles has a lot of pieces missing. So what I'm doing is uh, removing. I'm taking apart the jump ring that's attaching the chain to the dangling part of the necklace so that I have the, basically I have this whole one side of the chain. And I'm gonna make use of the clasp right here, which is one of those, you know, that you pull apart with your thumb. I'm gonna use that at the back to hold this around her neck. And this is what I've decided I'm gonna use to run through the top of the dress because I like the decorative look of this chain. The links are sort of like coils. You know, they're really, I really like them. They're pretty. And it doesn't really look like a chain, really. It, it looks like jewelry, or, you know, like a necklace or a bracelet as opposed to a chain. So I'm going to run this through the top. So I'm going to take the, the placeholder of this nylon ribbon off or nylon cord. I remove that. And I'm gonna run my little grippy tool through there. You've seen me use this before many times. I actually bought this when I was making cloth dolls and it was to be able to turn their little tiny fingers. Uh, and I, I hated doing that so much that I gave up the whole cloth doll idea. So, But it's come in handy in lots of other ways with my other artistic endeavors. Anytime you have to pull something through in a small area, it works really great. All right, so we've got the chain through. Now all I have to do is measure to make sure that when I cut the chain, it's the right length to attach to the clasp in the back. So that's 
how I want it to fit and I'm marking which of the links I want to cut off and I'm just going to cut that. Now the end of this, the links on this have a little loop in it so I'm able to use the jump ring, stick it through that and then I close it and then I can attach it with the clasp in the back and that's how that's going to look right now. I am going to do some more embellishments to this dress. I want to do some maybe crystals on it and things, but that's going to come in a later video because this video is getting way too long and I was getting way too frustrated. <laughs> All right, so we've got that part done. Now I want to show you how this is going to look. I'm not going to attach it yet, but once we get to the pretty much the very end because this is going to need to dry, I'm going to glue this right there to the top of the dress. That'll look pretty. I like that. It has sort of a branch. It almost looks like little curved branches. That's why I like it for, for the fairy. All right, now I did have some of those little dangles left from the necklace. So I'm gonna use this uh, head pin with a loop on it and attach it and make her some earrings that will match her belt. Because, you know, I think fairies need earrings. Everybody needs earrings, right? <laughs> All right, so I just open up that loop a little bit and then slip the dangle on and close it and do that to the other one as well. And then if you remember now, this doll does not have the original ears. She has the epoxy elf ears. So otherwise we would just be able to make these earrings and stick them right in those holes that were already in the ears for this doll. But uh, we're going to have to actually drill some holes into the epoxy. So I'm using the smallest little drill bit that I have. And the epoxy was hard. I'm telling you, boy, I took some drilling. I was kind of surprised it was so hard. So this stuff is pretty durable. <laughs> and then the bit came off in her head, which was kind of funny. <laughs> Oh, okay, and then uh, we're going to drill over on the other side as well. Yeah, came off over there too. So we've got our holes, and uh, so I kind of bend earrings for dolls like this in a sort of a U shape, um, so that it goes in, and then uh, seems like that way it sort of holds it into the ear. So uh, fix the one on that one side, and now we're going to go over and do the same thing on the other side already drilled the hole just going to bend it and then work it into the hole so that it goes down into the head and then uh, then it, it's going to stay pretty well I think and uh, now we've got our pretty dangling earrings that match the jewels on her belt I like the way those turned out her and her fairy ears <laughs> You know, if I'd used alpaca fiber for her hair, those ears would show a lot better. That's one thing I kind of regret about this, but I like the hair. I think it's pretty. I just, it doesn't show that, you know, allow the ears to show through because it doesn't lay flat. It's very floofy. All right. So, so we've done the earrings. I think our, our clam is dry, the one that we broke. So we're going to go ahead and attach this belt to the doll. And now you can see there where all the jewels kind of fell down to the middle. <laughs> oh, this dress killing me. All right, but I can fix that. And I'm going to fix that off camera later. So this, uh, like I said, I want this to drape so that this part hangs open. And we're going to work more on that as we do the finishing touches on this doll. But so far, I'm happy with... The design coming out pretty much the way I had envisioned it and um, I'm happy that I had the jewelry to use to make the belt and uh, the earrings and that sort of thing you know so the next part is I uh, don't want to give her sleeves but I want to give her some dangly things on her arms so I'm taking this piece of lace with a little bit of the fabric that I cut and I'm going to glue the fabric down in the back just to give us a little bit more body. And of course here, my camera cut out again, but I just used fabric tacking glue. And 
folded the fabric over and uh, that's how it turned out <laughs> yeah now this is going to be attached to her sort of mid upper arm and I'm going to glue it down I'm just going to wrap it around I'm doing the wrap over the the part where it folds over in the back so that doesn't show and I'm just going to put a dab of uh, E6000 on this and then fold the piece of the fabric over it so it'll it'll be glued together and it'll also probably be glued to her arm pretty much because I don't want it to fall off and then we'll trim it it's easier to work with in this long length see there it there my glue was dried up see everything everything was going wrong but I squeezed it enough that I finally got it out all right so we're going to fold that over, get it to where we want it, and then we'll trim off the excess, leaving enough folded over to hold it. And then we're just going to, actually I clamped it, I uh, didn't do that on camera, I put a little bit of saran over it so it wouldn't stick and I put the clamp on it. And then I did the same thing to the other arm. And with clamps on it, it held it so I could go, you know, do something and get away from this for a little bit. <laughs> All right, so those are finished. I actually went back and sewed the lace that wasn't right at the top where I glued it. I did sew that together just so it looked nice and even. But we've got our little dangling flowers of the lace. And now we're finally ready to put this jewel on the bodice all right so I'm going to glue it on I'm not going to sew it on because I don't like to see the threads that I would have to wrap around the little stems so I'm just make sure I get it right in the middle since I'm going to glue it because it will be very difficult to remove <laughs> all right so just put a glob there right where the center of the flower will be Put that on there and that's really all we're going to do in this video because I'm done. <laughs> I am done. <sighs> Tuesday night after all weekend. Yep. So I think it turned out good though. I'm happy with it. It was an adventure. Lots of things went wrong, but it turned out the way I wanted it to look. So here's where we are so far in this series. This is our basic dress. We are going to do a little bit more embellishments to it. And in the next video, we're going to do some fairy wings. That's a new technique that we're going to show you. So I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you got some new tips. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss a thing. Thanks and bye.